In this video, we will uh, talk about other substrates like proteins or fats. How do they give us energy? Up till now, what we talked about was starting with glucose. Glucose undergoes glycolysis, then Krebs cycle, then we talked of electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. So that is carbohydrate main respiratory substrate giving us energy. There are two more substrates, proteins and fats. They also provide us energy, but the uh, priority wise, first is carbohydrate, then is fat, and at the end, it is the protein which gives us the energy. So we want to see how these other two things participate in this process of energy liberation. So just to have a uh, quick recap of what happens in carbohydrate metabolism, let us say, and we are not going to discuss the complete processes. I'm going to just skip some steps and write few. Glucose 6-phosphate changes into fructose 6-phosphate and then fructose 1,6-biphosphate. This dissociated to form three carbon compounds. Di, hydroxy, acetone phosphate and glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate. This is the part of glycolysis that we are writing here. And glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate undergoes further changes and finally we get pyruvic acid. We are skipping the intermediate steps here and the end product is pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid changes into acetyl coenzyme A and this acetyl coenzyme A participates in Krebs cycle. This is the part which we have done in detail but we started with glucose that means this is how the carbohydrates are broken down and we get the energy. This, this is finally Krebs cycle and then energy liberation. Two more substrates. The other substrate is protein. What happens if proteins have to give us energy? Proteins, they dissociate to give us amino acids. Amino acids are the molecules which contain amino group and carboxyl group. After deamination, that means after loss of amino group, they change into pyruvic acid. So this is after deamination, removal of amino group because carboxyl group still remains. So it changes into pyruvic acid. That means if proteins have to provide energy, they will join this pathway at pyruvic acid. This is important to know where they are joining because that's how we will be able to calculate the number of ATPs synthesized. Pyruvic acid, when it changes into acetyl coenzyme A, here we get 1 NADH2. 1 NADH2 gives us 3 ATPs and then 1 Krebs cycle. 1 Krebs cycle gives us 12 ATPs. So 12 from here and 3 from here, this will give us 15. But condition is, if we are getting only 1 amino acid changing into pyruvic acid. If a question comes that protein gives you 10 amino acids. So you count first with one amino acid that is 15 multiplied with 10. So that is what is the ATP number if your protein is giving you 10 amino acids. The other substrate is fat. When fats dissociate, they dissociate into two molecules, fatty acids and glycerol. Glycerol joins this pathway at glycerol dehyde. That means they will first form a three carbon compound and change into glycerol dehyde. And from glycerol dehyde, the same process will continue. Fatty acid, after beta oxidation, change or join at acetyl coenzyme A. So fatty acids will join this cycle here after beta oxidation. So now again when we have to calculate number of ATPs coming from fat, we need to know whether it is a monoglyceride fat, diglyceride fat or a triglyceride fat. 
monoglyceride fat will give us one fatty acid, one glycerol. Diglyceride fat will give us two fatty acids, one glycerol. And tri fatty, uh, triglyceride fat will give us three fatty acids and one glycerol. So depending upon the molecule, we can go on counting the number of ATPs. So if it is a monoglyceride fat and we get one glycerol, it will join at glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So whatever we gain up to pyruvic acid, we got two ATPs and one NADH, here one NADH and 12 ATP, ATP from Krebs cycle. So this is the total outcome coming from one glycerol. And one fatty acid will join at acetyl coenzyme. This will be followed only by Krebs cycle, so 12 ATP from Krebs cycle. So if it is carbohydrate undergoing aerobic breakdown, we get 36 ATPs. And if it is proteins, depending upon how many amino acids are released, we need to count the number of ATPs. If it is fat, depending upon mono, di or triglyceride fat, again we need to count the number of ATPs. But as you can see here, this becomes a common pathway for all three substrates. And first, respiratory substrate is carbohydrate. After that, it is fat which is broken down and at the end, it is the protein. In this particular process, we find that there are certain breakdown reactions that is catabolic and some building up reactions that is anabolic. Some big compounds are being constructed here, whereas some big compounds are being broken down here. That means in this pathway, respiratory pathway, Anabolism as well as catabolism, both are taking place. Such pathway is known as amphibolic pathway. And that is why respiratory reactions are known as amphibolic. Reason is there is catabolism as well as anabolism. Both type of reactions are seen in this respiratory reactions. So all three substrate act as respiratory substrate. Preference is carbohydrate first followed by fat and last is protein. Energy obtained from these is variable again depending upon how many amino acids and what type of fat is getting broken.